An introduction to gait impairment. A 63-year-old man is brought into your office by his spouse for an increased tendency to fall, especially when turning around the corner to reach the refrigerator. His spouse also reports he can't keep up anymore during their walks around the neighborhood and that he walks funny. The patient insists he is just old and clumsy, but decided to come to you upon his spouse's insistence. What are the different causes of gait impairment? Most neurological causes of gait difficulty are related to deficits in motor function, sensation, coordination, or a combination of these functions. Coordination problems can be further divided into pathology affecting the vestibular, cerebellar, or extrapyramidal systems. The patient's particular comments, such as his tendency to fall while turning, slow speed, and walking funny, seem to suggest he has some sort of gait disturbance. How do we determine the etiology of our patient's gait impairment? The next step is to conduct a neurological exam. The exam should assess key areas, including extraocular movements, tone, and motor strength of the arms and legs, thorough sensory exam of the arms and feet, deep tendon reflexes, and coordination testing of the upper and lower extremities, including finger to nose, heel to shin, and rapid alternating movements. Most importantly, we should observe his walking with attention to his posture, base, how far apart his feet are, speed, size of his steps, known as stride length, arm swing, and turning. Be sure also to check walking on toes and heels, tandem gait, and assess for the Romberg test. On examination, you note he has 5 out of 5 strength in his legs, intact sensation to pinprick, temperature, vibration, and proprioception, 2 plus reflexes, and a normal heel-to-shin test. He has increased tone and slow, rapid alternating movements with the right hand. You ask our patient to stand up, walk down the hallway, and turn around and return to the examination room. You notice a stoop posture, a normal base, slow pace, and shortened stride length. He does not swing his arms and keeps his elbows and knees flexed. When turning around, he does not pivot smoothly to face the opposite direction, but instead takes several steps, also called an unblocked turn. You also observe a slight tremor in his right hand when he walks. After conducting a neurological exam on our patient and observing his gait, you recognize his gait is most consistent with Parkinsonism. Parkinsonism is defined by bradykinesia, then other motor and non-motor features, including gait changes and rest tremor. The most common cause of Parkinsonism is Parkinson's disease. Other causes of Parkinsonism include dementia with Lewy bodies, vascular Parkinsonism, and drug-induced Parkinsonism. In our case, we found normal cranial nerve function, strength, sensation, reflexes, and coordination on examination. This helps to rule out other common neurological causes of gait impairment. Here, you'll find some other causes and the associated exam findings, and typical gait appearance. Gait disorders can be caused by a variety of issues. In order to develop an appropriate differential diagnosis, it is important to understand the common neurological causes of gait impairment and their associated examination findings. We encourage you to practice these skills to help you better identify causes of gait impairment and develop an appropriate differential diagnosis. For more information on this and other neurological conditions, please visit aan.com.